everyone, I'm Sarah, and this is Budget Sew, where we create stylish, fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. Today, we're doing a sew along to Vogue 8405, view A in a size large. Vogue 8405 is a Vogue accessories pattern that was published in 2007. I bought this pattern on sale from Fabricland years ago. This package includes patterns and instructions for four line cats, each offered in small, medium, and large sizes. View A and B have two trim options for each hat. I made View A with the largest brim because it will look quite feminine and flattering while protecting my face from the sun. The recommended fabrics are twill, embroidered twill, raw silk, pique, jacquard, home decorating fabrics, and canvas. The fabric that I chose was a medium weight denim that I purchased at the Lens Mill store in London, Ontario, as part of a 40% off remnant sale. This fabric was in a bin of denim remnants that was sold by the pound. This denim caught my eye because it was 60 inches wide, had a bright red wrong side, and there was lots of it. It weighed 5.41 pounds and was 4.49 a pound originally for a total of 24.29. With the 40% discount, I paid $14.55, which broke down to $2.69 a pound. The link to my Lens Mill fabric haul where I purchased this fabric is right here at the top of the screen. Since I had 5.41 pounds of denim, which worked out to be just over four meters, I had plenty of fabric left over for other projects, including Vogue 9282, a pair of full length wide leg pants. The link to the video with the sew along is right here at the top of the screen. I also had enough fabric for McCall's 8007, a pair of fun flared jeans or bell bottoms. So stay tuned to Budget Sew for the sew along to that pattern. The lining fabric is a peachy pink with thin black designs that I bought about 10 years ago from Lens Mill store in London, Ontario. I use this fabric all the time and still have lots left over. This fabric was used for Vogue 8992 to line the wrap dress, as well as Vogue 7784, a gorgeous hat. You may recognize this hat from my Vogue 7784 sew along video. The link to that video is right here at the top of the screen. After I had cut out and marked my pattern, I applied my iron-on interfacing to the pieces 1 the crown, 2 the top, 3 the front brim, and 4 the back brim. Only one out of the two pieces of brims 3 and 4 should be interfaced. Then I pinned the interface brims 3 and 4 together. After that, I pinned the uninterfaced brims 3 and 4 together. I didn't have quite enough fabric for the crown, so my crown is made up of two pieces. To do this, I folded the pattern piece in half and added 5 eighths of an inch for seam allowances to the side that should have been placed on the fold. After it was cut out and interfaced, I pinned both crown pieces together at the side seams. Then I pinned the crown lining together at the side seam. I had enough lining fabric for the crown to be cut in one piece, so I pinned the sides together to be sewn. At the sewing machine, I sewed my two crown pieces together. This step is not in the instructions because this crown was only one piece. Then I sewed the two interface brim sections together, followed by the uninterfaced brims, and then the crown lining. Next, I pinned the seam allowances open to be top stitched. The instructions said to edge stitch, but I chose to top stitch. To top stitch on the outside, stitch a quarter of an inch or six millimeters from the edge, seam, or previous stitching. 
I pin the seam allowances open on the crown first, and then I pin them open on both interface and uninterfaced brim sections. Back at the sewing machine, I top stitch the interface brim section first, followed by the uninterface brim section. I think that top stitching adds a bit of polish to a garment or accessory and makes the item look designer. I like to think that it's designer because I chose to top stitch the hat and I chose to do it in a color that is different from the fabric. The Simplicity Sewing Book had a chapter about decorative extras. The chapter was called Distinctive Details Making the Difference. It said, your garment style and individuality are determined to a great extent by the designer details that provide the finishing touch. Top stitching is basically a double purpose, holding seams flat and accenting them in a neat linear manner. It may be done in matching or contrast thread, depending on the effect you wish to create. In either case, the stitching must be straight and even since it will show up distinctly on the finished garment. My next step was to pin the two brim sections together. The instructions said, pin the brim sections together, matching seams and having edges even. Stitch the outer edges together in a quarter of an inch seam. I've had this Vogue hat pattern for years and I was really excited to make it. I just love hats with big brims. They look so elegant. Another big brimmed hat that I would love to make up is the A Room with a View hat from the Modern Girl's Guide to Hat Making by Mary Jane Baxter. This book was a Christmas gift from Brad and was detailed in my Amazon sewing haul video. The link to that video is at the top of the screen. A Room with a View hat is a ridiculously romantic name for a ridiculously romantic looking hat. In spite of its aristocratic associations, however, this hat was a real bargain. The author made hers out of unbleached calico and some beautiful found lace. She made it for virtually nothing. Make the brim as large or as small as you like. This one is a very generous 20 centimeters at the front and 14 centimeters at the back. She used a medium weight interfacing to give it some body as it will be too floppy otherwise, especially if you're making a large brim. The precise look of the hat will depend very much on the fabrics that you use. Then I pin the top of the crown. The instruction said, pin top two to upper edge of crown, matching centers and clipping crown where necessary. Stitch in a quarter of an inch or six millimeter seam. The best way to pin these pieces together is to stick the pin through the round top piece into the crown piece. I don't suggest pinning the crown to the top because it's much more difficult placing the pins around the outside. If you're looking for a quick and easy cute hat, then I'd recommend the Fit to be Tied hat from the book Generation T, 108 Ways to Transform a T-Shirt by Megan Nicolay. This hat is a cinch in both sense of the word. All you need are scissors and a t-shirt. And since you'll only be using a sleeve of the t-shirt, you'll have plenty of fabric left over to make a skirt to match, or use the other sleeve for a small change purse. The possibilities are endless. For this project, it's best to try the sleeve on your head with the t-shirt still attached to make sure it's the right size before you commit to the project. Then I pin the top lining and crown lining pieces together following the same method that I used to pin the denim top and crown together. Even though the lining fabric is a peachy pink, I used red thread for the seams. To be honest with you, I didn't change the thread or the sewing machine needle when I sewed the denim and the lining. 
But the polyester lining is like iron and the needle didn't destroy it. I chose to use red thread for all the seams and top stitching because of the red wrong side of the fabric. When I started sewing, I forgot to check how much red thread I had in my thread box. It turned out I had only one spool of Guterman 347 in color crimson, and I used it up rather quickly sewing this hat, as well as two pairs of pants. I called my mom to tell her my problem, and she offered me her red spools of thread. Since my mom and I don't live very far apart, we met at the halfway point in between our houses so I could pick up the red thread and get back to sewing. I was surprised at how fast I was going through the red thread, so I placed a Fabricland online order to replace the red spools that I borrowed from my mom, as well as restock my sewing supplies. I ended up buying more than what I had originally planned, but that's part of the fun of fabric shopping. The link to the video of my Fabricland online fabric haul is at the top of the screen. At the sewing machine, I sewed the top and crown sections together first. I pulled out the pins as I sewed for two reasons. The first was that I did not want to damage my sewing machine or break the needle. And the second was that as I was sewing these pieces together, I kept getting poked by the pins because the fabric was so stiff. I used a Schmetz jeans needle size 100 or 16 to sew my denim hat. This jean needle smoothly sewed the denim with no problems at all. Another beautiful hat in the Modern Girl's Guide to Hat Making is the Bloomsbury Bell. This 1920 style cloche is a really flattering style and you can use a variety of fabrics to get different effects. Tweed for winter, crisp cotton or linen for summer. It can be unadorned or trimmed with ribbons or flowers. The hat is made of only two pieces and is surprisingly straightforward. It gets its lovely bell shape by gathering up the fabric by hand. Next I sewed the top lining and crown lining together. I can't say enough good things about the Modern Girl's Guide to Hat Making book by Mary Jane Baxter. The travel hat is another one of my favorites. This hat is made up of collar felt, which comes by the meter and is about three millimeters thick. Make sure you're not offered thin craft felt as it won't have the same finish. This thicker felt will give your hats a good firm finish, but is also soft enough to pack and will look more vintage if it gets bashed around in your luggage. You can of course use other fabrics to make this hat, but they will just come out floppier. Use interfacing as an extra layer if you want a stiffer finish. Felt does not need to be cut on the bias, but if you use normal fabric, you must place the crown side pattern piece on the bias. This hat is perfect for all the badges and appliques that I've collected. Then I sewed the two brim sections together. The instruction said, stitch in a quarter of an inch or six millimeter seam. Then I turned the brim right side out. I pinned the outer edge of the brim to be top stitched a quarter of an inch or six millimeters from the edge of the brim. Then I pin the inner edge of the brims together to be stay stitched. To stay stitch, stitch along the seam line using small machine stitches. 
Then I clip the curve of the crown. Clipping the curve eliminates the bulk and creates a smooth outer edge while maintaining the curved edge. If the seam was left unclipped, the hat would wrinkle and pull and not look as attractive as it could be. At the sewing machine, I top stitched a quarter of an inch or six millimeters from the outer edge of the brim. I was really pleased with how the red thread popped on the navy blue denim, very sharp. I like the two Russia with love hat from the modern girl's guide to hat making. This hat looks perfect for cool fall days. This hat is a good one to start with as there are only two pattern pieces. It's made of fake fur, which can hide a multitude of sins, and what's more, it's very warm and looks terribly sophisticated. On the downside, fake fur tends to get everywhere during the making process. You don't need to worry about cutting out the fake fur on the bias, so just do it on the straight. However, when you're cutting the fur, do try to cut just the woven fabric base and not the fur itself. Otherwise, it will end up looking chopped, a bit like a bad haircut. Then I stay stitched the inner edge of the brim. I love hats and I'm tempted to make the tweed tam o' shanter. I'm a big fan of Fair Isle jumpers, tartan trues, and Highland tweeds. So this very wearable beret makes me think of Chris Romantic walks in Bonnie Glen sporting 1940s garb. Then I pin the crown to be edge stitched. There'll be two rows of edge stitching. One row around the edge of the top and the other row around the upper edge of the crown. At the sewing machine, I edge stitch the crown. Another great book filled with hats and headwear ideas is Chic on a Shoestring, also by Mary Jane Baxter. I bought a used copy of this book on Amazon.ca. It's actually a withdrawn library book from the Schaumburg Township Library in Illinois, USA, and it's in fantastic condition. Chic on a Shoestring is your entree into the world of high fashion that will inspire you to create your own covetable clothes and accessories. Learn to transform ornate trims and vintage buttons into spectacular brooches. Craft a favorite silk scarf into a chic top. Or rework flea market shoes into fashionable showstoppers. With more than 40 unique style ideas, including quick and easy no sew projects, Chic on a Shoestring will inspire first time and experienced crafters alike. Then I pinned the brim to the crown. The instruction said, pin brim to crown, matching centers, symbols, and clipping brim where necessary. I didn't clip the brim to make it fit. The cashmere beanie in chic on a shoestring is a fantastic refashioning idea. This is a great way to use up old cashmere sweaters that have either worn out or been attacked by moths. Cashmere makes for a really luxurious and cozy hat. However, if you don't have an old cashmere sweater, just use an old wool one or a t-shirt will work too. You'll ideally need something with either no ribbing at all along the bottom or one with no more than one to two inches of ribbing. Otherwise, it won't look right. The instructions will make a lovely slouchy beanie and you can embellish it with whatever catches your eye. You'll almost wish for winter so you can wear it. Mm -hmm. 
At the sewing machine, I sewed the brim to the crown. I think that the emergency hat from Chic on a Shoestring is a fun idea. There's a moment in every girl's life when she gets an invite out of the blue to a wedding, a posh party, or other event which a hat is a must. The ensuing panic about what to wear can be soothed if she knows that she has the ability to rustle up a cute little something herself. It's such a handy thing to be able to do and this little pillbox hat should be just the ticket. Imagine your friend's astonishment when you reveal that it's been made from a cereal box no less. Fortunately, you'll be pleased to hear that the hat is covered in fabric, so it should hold up pretty well in inclement weather as long as you don't stray outside for too long during a thunderstorm. It's not too difficult to make and is based on the sorts of methods that professional milliners use, so you can feel very proud of yourself when you've achieved it. The success of this hat largely depends on using the right type of fabric. Nothing too flimsy, but nothing too bulky either. A lightweight wool suiting or a robust furnishing cotton will work well. Or you could use craft felt. You want something that glue can't seep through. You'll also need to use fabric glue, the type with a little brush on the lid. Set aside a good couple of hours to make this stunning little hat and don't rush it. You might find it a little fussy if you're new to hat making, but it's worth doing this well. You can decorate your hat with something ready-made or try one of the other trims in the book. Then I clip the curve of the top and crown lining. I also press the lower edge of the crown lining. This step gives the edge a nice crisp look. Then I turned the lining inside out so that both of the wrong sides of the fabric were facing each other. Then I pinned the lining into the hat. I missed the step before this one where the lower edge of the crown was to be edge stitched. I forgot to do it, but I don't think that this takes away from the look of the hat. The Turban Tutorial is another project that caught my eye. During the 1930s and 40s, when women took up the so-called men's work for the first time, there was a fashion revolution, namely women wearing pants in the factory and the fields. Mary Jane Baxter says, I have to hand it to those girls because personally, I've always struggled with looking chic while turning over clods of earth. But in all those black and white photos, there hardly seems to be a hair out of place. Those go-getting gals still wanted to look glam, so they adopted the turban, which kept their luscious locks in check. Now, tying your own turban is a bit of an art. So for many modern day misses, a pull-on turban is a great way of getting a dash of 40 chic on the go. This simple stylish number is made from an old t-shirt because t-shirt fabric doesn't fray, so you don't need to worry about finishing the edges. The measurements for this turban are for an average size head, but they may vary slightly depending on the stretchiness of the fabric you choose. Try it on as you're making it to ensure a perfect fit. You can machine stitch this or sew it by hand in an hour or so. I've been looking at making a turban with Vogue 7784, view G, but this tutorial looks like fun too. As I chatted with my mom on the phone, I hand sewed the lining to the hat. I've been looking at different ways to use up all my remnants such as making scrunchies and headbands, and I found that the retro headband in chic on a shoestring uses two pieces of fabric, three by 20 inches. This handy headband is great for using up scraps of pretty cotton fabric. Each side can be made out of a different print. Mary Jane used a vintage buckle for a bit of extra styling, and it gives it a slightly 60s feel. 
If you don't add the buckle, then the headband is reversible. You can whip these up in under an hour once you get the hang of them. Here is the finished hat! My Vogue 9282 pants. The link to the sew along video is in the description box of this video. I bought the Ann Klein sweater at the Hudson's Bay Company. The shoes are Comfort Dex Flex Wedge Heels from the Payless Shoe Store. I bought the KGB Studio Purse at Value Village. The necklace was a gift and the earrings were in a Ziploc bag full of jewelry that I bought for $5 at a church Christmas bazaar. I hope you enjoyed my sew along to Vogue 8405. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. I love sharing my new, vintage, and out of print sewing patterns, and my tips, tricks, quick fixes, and even my mistakes when sewing along with you. I also love sharing my wonderful fabric finds that I thrifted at charity shops as well as brand new fabric online and in store. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and press the bell so you receive a notification when I release a new video. If you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching. See you next time.